some people miss out and ask for it okay so what i have done is taken one balloon on a cut bottle i've fixed the balloon from the end from where we blow and the other end i've made a hole and inserted one plastic straw piece there is a gap between the straw and the hole and hence i'm going to fix a rubber band so that there is no leakage of air from there we are just done ready to start playing with it so let's see what happens now this end of the straw i'm going to blow through this so instead of blowing from the end from the other end where we normally blow from i'm going to blow from this hole the cut that i have made so there's some funny kind of sound coming out nothing so interesting now i'm going to change the angle so i was blowing like this now i'm going to place this up so instead of placing it down here i'm going to place it up here and let's see what happens as you can see there's a nice horn kind of sound now when i place my finger on top of this balloon and i stop allowing the balloon to move freely let's see what happens as you can see when my finger is placed on top then the balloon is not able to move and because of that the sound stops coming <clears throat> please keep putting some messages on the chat window that gives me a confirmation that there are no technical glitches uh, can can someone unmute and give me a feedback i'm clearly audible and the video is visible yes clearly audible and appear visible as well thank you thank you please please keep giving this acknowledgement because we are not face to face i'm not able to see you i'm not able to read your expressions thank you thank you for giving that feedback okay so <clears throat> as i as i showed when i placed my finger on top then the movement stopped happening and the sound also stopped which clearly means that for the sound to get produced the balloon should be able to move freely also we observed that when i was blowing from here the sound doesn't get produced it happens only when i place it here will it happen only with a cut bottle or anything which can allow the air to pass if i block it from the bottom will the sound be produced these are some simple experiments which can be tried what i'll do is i'll remove the balloon from the bottle and see if i can place it on something else which can just allow the i've removed the balloon from there and take something else and i have a thread reel so you get many threads which are wound around the cylinder like this so this as you can see this is on uh, if i blow from one end the air will be able to come out so let me see if the sound can be produced with this while i fix the balloon i want you all to predict what will happen do you think sound will be produced with this or do i need a bottle only and no negative marks no money getting spent in predicting so please predict freely and honestly because if you are predicting then you are more prepared for the result that's the basic rule with any science experiment so before conducting the experiment you have to predict okay so i'm ready to experiment and i'm hoping that you all have made the prediction in your mind let's see if this works the way we did with bottle i'm going to keep this higher than the level of my mouth so there is a leakage between the straw and the cut part of the balloon so i'll have to fix this back and this is all man made nothing using a machine and hence these things keep happening but on the other hand you have a lot better control because you make it yourself and hence you can break it and you can make again 
and you can make again differently so the way i just did uh, i first made it with the bottle and now i'm making it with a thread reel so breaking is not always bad because it allows you to make again provided you know how to make and that's one of the core things that we believe that if a science experiment if the apparatus is ready made and i just walk into the laboratory and work on the experiment then i depend on those instruments these are simple materials and hence we want to break the notion that labs are only laboratories and hence the name unlab let's see if this works doesn't work as you can see i'm trying quite hard but this doesn't work the slightly different setup let's see if that can work so this time i'm taking a different balloon because quite often uh these small variables they matter so if the balloon is tight if the straw is not wide enough then things can change i have a different balloon a different straw which is a slightly wider straw so this doesn't work what do you think is the explanation so the bottle the plastic bottle didn't work thread reel didn't plastic bottle work but the thread reel did not work i have another plastic pipe here let me see if it works with this how do you compare the plastic reel and the thread reel both are very similar both are just vertically cylindrical in shape the thread reel did not work but the plastic pipe worked not only that this plastic pipe also gives us lot more exploration opportunity what are the exploration possibilities i'm talking about since this is a pvc pipe collar collar is something which can be used to join two pipes so i can attach one more pipe at the bottom of this and increase the length of this pipe would it work with a longer pipe and this time before i go and conduct this experiment i want one of you to either tap your predict uh, type your prediction on the chat window or come on the mic and share your opinion okay vinod vinod nikhil both of them are saying it will work okay those of you that's very nice uh, just like the previous okay so nikhil is also saying that it will work and there won't be any change others please share if you think it will work please also share if you think the sound will be any different uh, and when i say sound will be different the yeah okay it may be louder puja shree is saying it may be louder uh, could there be a difference in the pitch uh, do you think it will be deeper or sharper and of course other thing is as pujashri is saying the volume part so it should be higher you are saying the pitch will be higher what do what do i mean by sharper and deeper if let's say we compare the uh, usually the voice of human males is deeper whereas females is sharper also children under certain age the voice is sharper okay i see that arjun is okay arjun is saying he thinks it will be a higher pitch okay let's let me conduct the experiment hopefully you remember what kind of sound it was with a shorter one let's see <laughs> remember the previous sound 
I'll produce that again by removing this file. So very clearly, as I'm increasing the length, sound is still getting produced, but sound is becoming deeper. The question is, will it continue to become deeper if I increase the length further? And this time, to see a significant change, what I'm doing is, I'm adding three lengths of pipe. So now I have one, two, three. So it's a total of around 64 centimeter long pipe. First question is, will this work at all? And if it will work, will, it, will that pattern continue to become deeper and deeper? I'm hoping you are able to hear the sound. Uh, sometimes with the earphones, uh, I can't hear it very clearly. It seems to be completely blocked from the outside world. I'm removing one so that I can also get the experience. <laughs> It almost reminds of the kind of sound you get to hear in these Buddhist monasteries. And as you can see, as the length kept increasing, the sound became deeper and deeper. Now what's happening? For a couple of basic questions. Why does this produce the sound at all? Second is, why is there a change in the type of sound? So what happens is, as you saw, when I'm keeping it like this, there is no sound, but only when I keep it this way, that is, this is higher. What happens is, as I blow, the air comes here, hits an obstruction, so air cannot pass through the pipe. And since I continue to blow air, air wants to pass through. And since the balloon membrane is elastic in nature, it gets pushed and air enters. But again, because of the elasticity of the balloon, the balloon comes back. And stops the path again, but I continue to blow. So again, the balloon expands, some more air goes in, and hence the balloon does this kind of motion, which is what we call as vibrations. So as the balloon membrane vibrates, the air, the entire air column inside that also vibrates. And depending on how it is vibrating, so one way is that it vibrates like this, second is it could be vibrating like this and hopefully you are able to see the difference. So when it is vibrating like this, the number of times it completes one full cycle in one second is a lot lesser when it is doing this as compared to this. When it is shorter length, air goes, comes back, goes, comes back, and hence it does this kind of thing. Whereas when it is long, then it does something like this. If I were to talk in terms of physics, those of you who are studying in the younger grades, please ignore these terms if they are new for you. But those who have got introduced, I'm talking about the frequency of vibration. So the frequency increases if the length decreases. So the length of the vibrating column, if that is short, then it is high frequency. If this is long, then it is low frequency, which is what also happens with our vocal cords, which is why when children are young, even the boys, they have a very sharp sound, but as the length of the vocal cord increases as they grow, then the voice starts becoming deeper and deeper. Females, the vocal, vocal cord length is shorter compared to males. <clears throat> high frequency sound, any high frequency wave that has a lot more energy compared to low frequency and it travels further. <clears throat> if you compare, uh, let's say, same applies with colors. So violet color has a lot more energy as compared to the red energy because the, that's how the frequency is. <clears throat> Syntax is all about doing things with hands. So most of the experiments, the first thing you do is make the apparatus for you to start experimenting. In this case, 
what I did in front of you. I took a balloon, I took a straw piece, did some cutting, fixed it. So I'm getting my apparatus ready. And there's a functionality which I'm looking for. Also a lot of fun to see that, oh, I can produce a sound and sound varies, etc. After that, the fun starts as I start making these kind of changes that what will happen if I change the material instead of bottle, I take thread reel, instead of thread reel, I take a plastic reel. I increase the length. Let's say if I had taken a newspaper and made a roll out of it and fix the balloon on that, would that have worked? If I do the reverse, in fact, a very interesting experiment is so this is also a pipe and the ones that I'm blowing from, that's also a pipe. So what will happen if I reverse? So instead of blowing from here and air coming out from here, what if I blow from here and the air comes out from the thinner pipe? Would that work? So any scientific exploration, the first thing is the required resources, the thought, once the thoughts come in, then you start experimenting, then you start playing around. And quite often, though science is a lot of fun, if you want to go, it, go in a methodical manner, before you come up with a theory, you need to be ready with a lot of data collection. So every experiment that we have children work with, they work on, they make the apparatus, play around and record their observations. Sometimes recording observations methodically is a painful process. <clears throat> but the way you can't get any diamond in the world without going through the pain or effort, you cannot come to a theory till you have collected enough data. So in this case, for different lengths, you record what kind of frequency you are getting. Are you getting sharper sound, deeper sound? You place your finger, what happens? You sprinkle few salt particles or uh, rice grains on top and see what happens to them. Do they uh, jump up and down? Do they jump sideways or do they remain unmoved as you blow? Plenty of such exploration start happening after you make the apparatus. I'll quickly open a PPT to talk about the program and I'll again demonstrate few more experiments. This was just one out of the plenty of experiments that we have worked on. Any comments, any thoughts from anyone? As I said, it's a small group. We can afford to be informal. So please come on the mic and share your thoughts. Okay, I'm opening the presentation and I'll share my screen soon. Before I go there, uh, give me a quick input. Where, which part of country do you all, uh, have you all logged in from? Are you from Bangalore, outside Bangalore? Yes, Nikhil, it was, yeah. Hmm. Thanks, thanks Nikhil for sharing. Okay, Carol is saying Bangalore, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Kerala, Trivandrum as well. Excellent. Thanks, thanks for sharing this information. Just curious. Uh, okay, uh, let's continue with. So I'll share my screen. <clears throat> We have been doing this work since October 2014. I showed you only one experiment, one out of close to 300. So we have around 350 such experiments, which we are calling as tactivities. It's a new word we coined, it's tactile activities. We were not happy with calling different names, some being called as models, some as experiments, some as toys, and hence to represent all of them, we are calling them tactivities, which means tactile activities. All our activities are there on our YouTube channel as well as this website called tactivity.in, T followed by activity. We want to reach out to as many children as possible. So most of the instructional stuff is all open source. 
we have worked with a variety of children and teachers the primary motive is to reach out to many children as many children and teachers as we can because uh, most of us who started this work we had other things to do but we are into this mainly because of uh, the passion to make science interesting for many more children uh, the photograph that you see in this uh, slide that is uh, cv raman's home in bangalore our office is based out of this location it's a pretty uh, nice very pleasant two acres campus and uh, we are privileged to be associated with sir cv raman's uh, trust raman research institute trust we have been running this uh, award national level competition called uh, raman awards for the last 4 years in association with the rri trust uh, if you haven't heard about it please go and check the website it's a free competition and uh, the basic idea is to because in india uh, there are many children who have plenty of these small small ideas uh, sometimes they don't have the right resources but we want to highlight exactly those kind of ideas where you don't have access to great resources but still you have a, an idea to demonstrate a science concept then you are most welcome to become a part of this okay uh, so the all the resources uh, we have compiled them and put together on a google classroom that's a structured way for us to give you the resources but then we also want something informal and whatsapp is uh, doing that job in a great way that you can quickly ask without worrying about how we, people will judge me and uh, can i ask this question at all so we want you to be part of both of these two places and uh, quite often after the orientation people struggle so i want all of you to log in and join to google classroom right now as during the ori orientation so i'm going to give you the classroom code uh, in the next few minutes i want you to log in to your google account and go to so i'm going to skip some of these because these things you'll all figure out the important uh, thing is to become part of the so to join the google classroom you log into your google account and go to classroom.google.com give me a signal once uh, you have logged in and reached to classroom.google.com you may type on the chat window or come on the mic and speak Okay thank you Pujashree so you are ready with uh, I'll wait for others to be ready If you do not have a Google account then just let me know then you may have to do it after the orientation but if you have a Gmail account ready just log in to Google and come to classroom.google.com we have two people who are logged in already i'll wait for another couple of people and then move to the next step okay thank you vinod i know that some of these could be parents name or child's name i'm just calling out the names which i can read so Uh, please excuse me if this is your parent's name or child's name so if someone else is speaking you may you may clarify if required okay so once you have logged in go to classroom.google.com and uh, you'll see one plus sign on the right upper corner you click on that and you'll get two options join classroom or create classroom so here you'll select join classroom
and after you have clicked on join classroom you have to enter the classroom code now the classroom code is different for different age groups and i am going to show you the age group who are in the 5 to 8 years bracket and i would request you to stick to the age group uh, age which you have entered at the time of registration so those who are in the 5 to 8 group they are being called as star 9 to 11 is galaxy and 12 to 16 is universe and the classroom codes are here and since it is difficult to copy paste from here and chances of uh mistakes happening are high i'm also going to type it on the chat window i just want you to be careful in terms of not getting confused with the so i don't want you to enter all the three classrooms just enter only one related to your age group so i'll copy paste these on the chat window so that if you want to copy paste from there you can do it uh arjun so okay 9 and 13 you should be able to join both the classrooms sir so one will be galaxy and another universe okay i'm going to wait for another 1 minute and then move to the next step okay i'm assuming others have also completed the uh we know that it says that it gets very complicated for us to then trace back we we don't have a way to find out uh, who has joined but in case you are using a different one uh, can you can you uh, tell me the new uh, other email id right here then i'll go and get the database updated those of you who have logged in okay thank you vinod i'm copying it from here and i'll ensure that it Uh, gets updated i am assuming this is the new one uh, can you also tell me the one which was used at the time of registration okay thank you 
Thank you, Vinod. I have got it. Okay. Oh, Arjun. Um, yeah, same for you, Arjun. It's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good that we know the asked about it. That way, uh, all of you. I should have communicated it uh, explicitly. It is just that we track the data for each child, whether the child attended the webinar or not. Uh, and also, we want to know the identity of all the people coming in. So, I've got the uh, new email IDs which Arjun and Vinod have used. Nikhil, you also send yours. I'll copy paste it from here. You can send it on the chat as a private message. I'll move on with the discussion and presentation. <clears throat> Another step I want you all to take right now is after you have joined the Google Classroom, I'll share my screen and show the next steps so that there is no confusion. Okay, okay, Nikhil, you are saying you have joined with the one which you had registered with. Okay, that's fine. Uh, for example, those of you who are 12 plus, when you join the universe Google Classroom, you would see something like this. And you would by default land on the tab which is called stream, you have to come to classwork. Now the important step, another important step which I want you all to take right now is come to classwork and here you see this uh, link called WhatsApp link. Please click on that and join the respective WhatsApp group because WhatsApp is where we have informal chats. People also share the photographs of that activities after completing on that group. And we also send quizzes during the week on the WhatsApp group. So you go here, click on the WhatsApp group invite and join the respective group. I could have as well pasted these links on the chat window but I want you all to go through this process so that that way you are also accessing one resource from the Google Classroom. Again, I'll wait for one minute and then move to the next step. Hmm. It can be done through laptop if uh, you have a setup. So there is a way to access WhatsApp on laptop by going to this web.whatsapp through the browser. It's something like this in my screen. Hopefully you can see so I'm able to access the WhatsApp. So then you can do. Uh, if you haven't set that up, uh, maybe you do immediately after the call. Okay. I'll wait for another 30 seconds. Okay, uh, 
let me move to the next step after you have joined the google classroom joined the whatsapp group what else do you do you access the material for your activity on the google classroom for example uh, universe now only thing is the schedule is different for each age group so for the star group which is the youngest group 5 to 8 year olds the material for the next week's activity has already been uploaded for galaxy and universe the universe next material will be uploaded by midnight today so you can access it tomorrow morning catapult model is last week's activity for which the webinar will be happening in another 15 20 minutes so you are not working on catapult model i'll demonstrate the activity that you are going to work on now what's the material that's available with us here you get to see what are the materials required also since we are not sending any kits to you thanks to the lockdown we are handicapped but then many experiments we realized can be done using household material so wherever you don't have the right material we have suggested an alternate material for example when children work on the catapult model which is like the you may have seen the in the bahubali kind of movies where those uh, big uh, through the they, they they throw it on the other side the model of that and where you also methodically vary the angle at which you uh, pull it before releasing you vary the load payload and compare the distance traveled so let's say you don't have a binder clip which is what we usually provide in our kit then the regular clips to uh, ensure that the clothes don't fly away they can also be used let's say you don't have a cloth clip also then you connect with us because there are many alternatives and i am very very confident we'll be able to find an alternative for you so the material list and alternate material list that's available here then the instruction guide which is a step by step instruction along with the photographs some people prefer this over the video so you can access the guide and in the same way the video which is a quick 2 3 minute instruction video that's also available i'm going to tell you what are the activities you all will be working on and either i'll demonstrate the activity myself or i'll show the video to you universe group is not working on catapult other than the video there's one more very interesting a uh, resource which is the observation sheet why is observation sheet important we humans by birth we observe various things and so many things we learn by observing if you think about it a newborn child without anyone teaching the child learns the mother tongue right and that that child has not joined any school so let there be no uh, assumption that unless you go to the school and unless someone teaches you you can't learn anything we have the ability and one of the main abilities we use for learning is observing but sometimes we may not pay attention to certain things for example as we are talking if i ask you the question do you think i have a ceiling fan in the room and now you may start observing for certain things if i have a fan do you think the fan is on now you may start seeing is are the clothes moving and uh, maybe you may also now observe the color of the t-shirt that i'm wearing because otherwise uh, if it's not important for us we may not pay attention to it what do you think is the background color of the wall or the curtains behind me now as i am asking these questions i am drawing your attention to these things for each activity we have figured out certain aspects which we want you to pay attention to and observation table is exactly that and trust me the entire process 
only when you go through the full process of working on the experiment and recording your observations that's when there is a lot of fun there is a lot of connections happening in our mind most of the observation tables will have two parts prediction and observation and you predict before observing then you are more prepared you most of the times have a theory in mind based on which you predict and if your prediction is wrong even then there is a fun because now you go and change your theory these are editable observation tables so you download them fill and upload back on google classroom and how to do all that for that the orientation presentation is kept there in case you can't figure out you can check there you still can't figure out as long as you are there on whatsapp group as well as google classroom you can either ask on google classroom this forum so you go to stream and type your question here or you come to whatsapp so as you can see there are plenty of these groups which we already have and people have been asking all kinds of questions here so you can do that okay uh, so the most important step is that you become a part of the classroom now let me show you the first activity that each of you are going to work on depending on the age group we'll start with the youngest children that is the star group before i show you what you are going to work on let me ask you a basic question how do you think a new plant comes out from one plant so you have a nice tree with let's say nice orange colored gulmohar flowers and there's one more gulmohar tree which comes up how do you think that happens yeah <clears throat> and it may be you may also be wondering have i understood correctly isn't this sound like a trivial question of course it's from a seed fine so let's build on top of it so i'm i'm intentionally asking trivial questions because i want a confirmation that you all are there and you are with me yes as arjun and nikhil both of them have said it's from the seed next question is do you think the seed so here is my tree does the seed fall right there or does it go far away if you think in terms of humans uh, a human adult gives birth to a child what would you prefer would the parent prefer the child to stay close to the parent or the child prefer stay close to the parent or would the parent want the child to go as far away as possible and obviously this question i am not even expecting an answer from you here it, the, there is an answer hidden in it that yeah what are you saying the child has to stay close to the parent but that's not true with plants yes it depends on how the seed gets distributed exactly and it's interesting to then ask that why would the plant want that the seed goes as far as possible so that there is no competition of nutrition and it's a very uh, sometimes if you think really from a human point of view you may feel even sad about it that how does a plant want the child plant to go as far from it as possible but that's how it is because only then the parent child and a parent plant and child plant will not compete for resources now there are some seeds which are very light in weight so even with a strong wind they go far away some seeds they fall in water and through the river they can pass what are the other ways and what if a seed is heavy then the seed will fall right under the branch of that tree what happens in those cases and that's where the plants have some very very intelligent methods i'm going to show couple of those methods one of the methods of course is that they invest they put lot of effort in getting some sugar and put it in attractive fruits animals like us 
we eat those fruits and then we throw away those seeds somewhere so automatically wherever that animal goes while eating the fruit the seed goes that far there are some other techniques for which we have some very simple paper models which you will be making as part of this activity so i have a very simple paper sheet here i'm making one cut on one side so here i have made one cut i'm going to invert this and make another cut at almost same distance i want you to do the measurements and do i am doing it approximately just to move fast so now i have two cuts one here and one here so i am going to fold this and this allows me to interlock and i have a nice paper fish now what do i do with this paper fish let me see if i can go as far as possible so i when i throw this i don't think the white background is making is helping it and i think i'll have to show you the video only let me make the second model so this is as simple as this but trust me this rotates horizontally and it's a trick to watch when it rotates so it doesn't just rotate like this it also does a spiral kind of motion let me make the second model and this is specifically for the seeds which are heavy so now i am taking a slightly bigger paper i'll make one cut from here so from the center and the place where this cut ends there i am going to make two more cuts one cut here and one cut here and now i'm only one step away from making my final dispersal model so i have just made three cuts and i'm folding the paper from here and also from here so i have like a t shape and this part i'm going to fold it so that now when i drop this ha huh, i wished there was a way for me to show this online i'm pretty sure you are not seeing what i am seeing as this comes down it rotates and it rotates like this like the like a helicopter kind of thing how does it help the plants to have these kind of seeds because it rotates it takes longer and hence the wind can push it far away these are two seed dispersal models which i just made as part of this activity you'll play around with this if you change the size does it take longer does it travel farther if you have horizontal wind those are some kind of exploration let me show you the activity for the galaxy group that is the 9 to 11 year olds let me have a look at some of the comments in the before i do that so yes it is carried by water as well as air as well as animals and there is one more dispersal models which model which you'll make as part of this where the seed gets stuck to the uh, animal's body yeah it it also travels through the bird droppings so the birds eat it and the bird droppings carry it uh, at other places <clears throat> i am again going to share the screen and show the activity for the galaxy group that is true seeds are not sh shaped so the idea is not to give a comparison to give a parallel to the shape of a seed the idea is to give a parallel with the functionality of a seed so there are many such seeds which spin before coming down and as they spin they take longer so it's of course a treat to watch these seeds coming down in a very peculiar fashion but the intent behind making them spin for the tree is not to entertain us the intent is to make the seed which is otherwise quite heavy make it take longer to come down so that the wind can blow it horizontally as far away as possible so there are these uh, plants called the mahogany trees 
so they fall exactly like this so they rotate and come down or even the maple seeds Yes, Mahagani, as Arjun is also talking about it. Okay, I'll go to the next one. But before I uh, show the next activity for Galaxy, I'll have to do one more quick demonstration. So what I have taken in this test tube is some turmeric powder and I'm going to add little water to it. Which color do you see here? Again, a slightly trivial question. So that's a regular yellow color. And I'll take one particular solution here, which is otherwise transparent. Uh, but I'll, when I put a couple of drops from this solution in this test tube, something very interesting happens. I've just put two drops and the color of turmeric changed to a nice dark red color. And that's a special property of turmeric. That if you add a solution to it, which is basic in nature, then the color changes to red. Now, what is base? What is acid? We will be talking about it as part of this activity after you have worked on that activity. Interesting thing is, if I add an acid to turmeric, then it doesn't change. Let's say I take lemon juice and squeeze it on turmeric, it doesn't change. Otherwise, we would have seen it all the time while cooking. We don't see it as often. What's very interesting is to this red colored paste that I have, which is how traditionally people used to make kumkum, the what is called vermilion or in some places it's called uh, sindur, some people call it shindur. That used to be made by mixing turmeric with one of the base and most common base is Tuna, the whitewash that you do, that is calcium oxide. When it is added to water, it becomes calcium hydroxide. And when I add acid to this, will the color change back to yellow? So when I add acid to vermilion or kumkum, so I have some vinegar in this bottle. I'm going to add a couple of drops of vinegar into this and see if the color changes back to yellow. And that's how turmeric can be used as an acid as well as base indicator. So you add a base to turmeric, ch color changes to red. You add acid to vermilion and the color changes back to yellow. Using this technique, there is a very interesting experiment which you are going to do, which is which I'm going to show the video for. Yes, when I add acid, there is a neutralization happening, which is why the color changes back to yellow. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I'm sharing the screen now.
It's a little longish video, which is why I was uh, fast forwarding. I think it uh, it has gone into the. So while the uh, video is getting loaded, uh, let me clarify. So the salt solution was prepared, put in this container, and a simple double A cell was used to put some current into this uh, the solution which was prepared. Now to pass that current, two copper strips are used, which you don't need to to have. You can replace those copper strips by just two spoons. So any steel spoon that you have or two nails that you have, you can replace the copper strip by that. Also a nice aluminum tape was used to connect the wire to the cell, that's not necessary. As long as the connection is stable, if the wire is able to stay connected with the AA cell, the pencil cell, it would work. And there is a separator placed on the two sides of the copper strip so that uh, the solution is able to move through. Okay, I guess I'll have to reload this and uh, let me see if I can show you the final picture. What we are doing uh, here is making our own base from common salt by doing what is called as hydrolysis or electrolysis. So through the simple electrolysis process, we are making sodium hydroxide, our own base from common salt. I'll sh show the video for that activity for the third age group, which is the 12 plus year old. Any questions or thoughts about the last activity which I showed, DIY base? Okay, I'll share the screen again and show the activity for the universe group. This video does not have sound because this was custom made for doing it with household materials. So if you are not hearing anything, don't worry about it.
Now note that she took a five rupee coin to make the hole, but she is fixing a two rupee coin there. Here, it may appear like a very simple thing that you are just fixing a coin in a card disc and rotating. With something as simple as this, there are plenty of um, thoughts which get triggered. If you have seen some fans, they have smaller blades uh, the, and hence the radius of the rotation of uh, the fan that is much lesser compared to the standard fan. What do you think which one rotates faster and which one consumes more electric power? So let's say you run a small fan for six hours and a regular fan, a standard sized blade fan for six hours, which of the two would consume more electric power? And in this same analogy is when you have a bigger disc, will that require more power to get started or a smaller diameter disc will require more power. On the other hand, which one will rotate for longer time? And of course, the assumption is that you are rotating both the discs on the same surface. So the friction is same. You have used same type of coin. So if you have used one of the new two rupee coins, you are using a new two rupee coin for the other one also. You are not using one of the old ones which had those Created with little dots kind of thing because then you are changing two variables. Other direction in which exploration can be done with this disk is the patterns that you see. So in the video I showed my colleague she had put some wool pieces and uh, because of that though there were only sectors of the circle when we rotate we see the full circle. In the same way we vary the colors then will we see mixed colors or will I continue to see as many colors as I put on the disc. So one is a complete exploration on the optics side, other is on the, in the direction of the friction between the two surfaces and the third direction is about the rotational motion which is the moment of inertia etc. So you may have seen the dancers were dancing uh, when the couple is dancing, the one so the skate dancer they start rotating at, on around an axis and at that time the dancer would take her hand and knees inside she would take it in and hence reduce the radius what happens because of that so we are going to go deep into all these aspects through this point talk but as i say the fun would lie in uh, recording the observations when you do the exploration that's when you learn more I see that some people have also responded to my questions. So small is less energy, large is more energy. Uh, let's let's uh, figure that out. We do these experiments and then we can infer based on what we observe. So with this, I come to an end to what I wanted to talk about. If there are questions, I can take that up. But uh, if since it's already few minutes past six o'clock if people have to leave you can leave just let me end the with this last one request uh, I have learned from my experience that there are, there have been plenty of trainings which I have attended I've realized that the trainings from which I have learned the most are the ones where I have worked after the training 
it reminds me of a story where a teacher experimented by giving 10 rupee note to 10 children in his class but some children came back saying sir i received 100 rupees whereas some children said i got only 2 rupees because some uh, some children just jumped out of the window went to the nearest shop and so the shopkeeper sold them a 2 rupee worth thing for 10 rupees they just got it because the 10 rupee they had received for free as another child purchased something from those 10 rupees after a lot of bargaining with the shopkeeper sold it back the money they got they invested it again and made 100 rupees out of the 10 rupees how much you get out of a workshop depends quite a lot on you we are getting the resources for you hence you spend more effort you explore more you will learn more we are here only to support in terms of resources and facilitation the webinar which we will do once a week you will start accessing the resources from tomorrow morning start working and start sharing on the whatsapp group so that our principal educator can respond with some questions some ideas some suggestions you will be attending the session once in a week the schedule i had mentioned in the slide in case you have missed it i am saying it again and you can also talk about it on the whatsapp group the star group the webinars will happen on thursday evening at 6 pm universe group is friday 6 pm and galaxy group is on saturday 5 pm if these timings are clashing with any of your other commitments please do not worry too much about that there is a 70% value that you derive by working on the activity and filling the observations if you miss the webinar which is the discussion part we record each webinar and we will post it on the google classroom so you can always go and access there don't stop yourself from working on the activity because of that okay uh, any questions why does the paper spin in the seed dispersal experiment i'm tempted to say that let's discuss this let's postpone this question to the webinar which will happen on thursday <clears throat> let me uh, avoid answering that but i'll give a little clue it would be interesting to observe whether it rotates clockwise or does it rotate anti clockwise and can you change the direction in which it rotates so if you look at it from top does it rotate anti clockwise or does it rotate clockwise and what does it depend on and will i be able to change the direction of rotation because of that that would also give us some hint about why does it rotate to begin with and that's uh, also quite similar to only thing is in a let's say uh, maple uh, tree or the mahogany tree the design has some more aerodynamic aspects coming in there also the center of mass etc are different there the weight weight definitely will play a role in pulling it downwards but it's this shape so if you notice even the paper fish so paper fish has a very similar thing but in a vertical way so that this also has the plates and this leads to horizontal rotation axis around the horizontal so rotation around the horizontal axis and obviously it's happening because so since we have talked this much there's a difference in the movement of air on this side of the plate as compared to this side of the plate and because of that so there is a slower movement of air on one side because air is hitting here as compared to here where because here air is able to pass through very easily what happens because of that when air moves easily it moves faster there are fewer number of air particles here on this side and hence the 
pressure here, pressure exerted by air particles is lower as compared to the pressure exerted by air on this side. And that difference in pressure causes the movement or horizontal drift. I wished we could talk more about it right now, but that wasn't the intent behind this workshop and hence I'm resisting the temptation uh, because otherwise we'll spend another half an hour. I have another activity which I'm tempted to show, which also uh, is based on the same principle. But let me, let's, let's pause here. Any other question about the program or about the process? Thank you, Vinod. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so I would end the call here with the assumption that there's nothing else that you have. Hopefully you'll start working on the activities and we'll see more photos and videos very soon. Thanks everyone. Bye. Have fun with science.